All right, in this video, we're gonna look at part two to creating a custom calendar from scratch. And in this particular part, we are going to focus on the month, day, and year. By month, day, and year, I'm referring to the top part of this calendar. And as we touch these buttons here, we're gonna to go to the next month, the next month, and then when we hit December and go to January, it will go up one year. And we can also go backwards through our months where it will rewind a year as well when we go from January back to December. As a matter of fact, we can continue cycling through these either way, forwards or backwards, and whenever we hit a new year, it should either go forwards or here we are going backwards to 2017. So I hope you get the idea there. And that's what we're gonna focus on here is just cycling through these months where the year is gonna change. So inside of the advanced editor in part one, we worked on the weekdays and now we're working on the part two, calendar from scratch part two. You can find this component in my free components folder. Inside of here, let's go ahead and go over to globals and I've added the new globals that we're going to need for this part of the tutorial. We need a month, year, and day. And notice that the month is going to be a list global. The year is going to be a text global and the day is also going to be a text global as well. We will not use the day that much in this particular video, but that will be very helpful later on in this series. For the month list global, make sure you put in one through 12 with commas in between each one. Now, back in my original CraftCal V4, I actually used a text global for month, but in all honesty, the list global for month is going to be a lot faster and a lot easier. We still need a text global for year, and that's just a blank text global. I typed in some random year, such as the year 2020, and some day, it does not matter here, I just typed in a 27. And for now, I have my list global month. I have it set to five. You can set it to whatever you want, but ultimately, right here in a moment, since my list global for month is five, we should be seeing May across the top of here. We should also be seeing the year 2020 once we finish this part two of this series. So let's head back over to the items inside of our calendar from scratch part two. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to add a stack group directly inside of this calendar from scratch part two. So adding a stack group. And for this stack group, I'm going to go ahead and vertically center this thing. And basically what this stack group is gonna do here is it's going to hold everything that we make for the rest of this series. With that said, I'm going to take the days of the week that we made in part one, I'm going to cut and paste that into this stack group. Now nothing changed there, but basically what we're gonna start doing from here on out, we're gonna start putting new pieces inside of here and we can keep them stacked inside of this vertically centered stack group. So I'm gonna go ahead and call this everything because it's gonna be holding pretty much everything in our calendar component. So inside of everything, we have the days of the week. Let's go ahead and add a overlap group. And for this overlap group, I'm just going to name it month and year with buttons. Now that might not be the exact same name on CraftCal V4, but it's going to be the month, the year, and we're gonna have those buttons. Basically this piece right here. All right, so let's go inside of that overlap group. And the first thing I want to add is a rectangle. And this rectangle is gonna be kind of like a container for everything. So for this shape, setting it to a rectangle, and I don't really care too much about the height. I want to set the width of this rectangle to the following. Let's add a code to it. And let's set it to seven times, and we want to do GV cell width. So cell W right there. And by us doing this, regardless of how wide or how narrow our calendar is gonna be, the width of this rectangle will always be seven times the cell width, and seven because we have seven days in a week. I'm gonna set this paint here to a semi-transparent, but eventually you're probably gonna to wanna to make this completely transparent. This is just to serve as a container for our month and our year and our buttons that we're getting ready to add into this overlap group that we have right here. So let's go ahead and add our text here for the month and the year. Now I have the codes over here, but I'm going to explain what these codes do. And this is the one we're actually gonna be using right here. So I'm gonna add some text and I'm gonna go ahead and make this text. I'm gonna give it the font of our global font. And I'm also gonna go ahead and just apply that text size to this as well. Now later on, we probably will be using some percentages of our text size, but I'm okay with this 
title here or this month and year here being the same size as our weekdays. Does not matter for right now. We can go back and fine tune that later. So let's go into this text item here. Let's delete everything we have in there right now. And I'm going to apply a DF. That's a date format. Format a date into text. And what I want to do here is I'm going to type in four capital M's right now. And basically four capital M's will display the month in its full name. I'm going to put a comma after this. And for now, I'm just going to do something. And this is what I'm using down here is like I can do some numbers with a Y for a year. I can also do some numbers with a capital M for a month. Then we have some days, hours, minutes, and seconds. And I'm going to be setting somewhat of a static date up here with the month and the year. And the only reason why I'm saying static is because we're going to be changing this on our own using these buttons. So to do that, I'm going to do, let's just type in a two. I'm going to put an M after it. And I'm going to close this up like that. So basically what it's doing here is this. It's going to show some month in its full length. That's what those four M's stand for. And when I type in two M, it's going to use the second month. If I change this to five, it's going to say May. If I change this to 12, it's going to say December. If I type in 13, I don't know what it's doing there, but uh, you know, one is January, 12 is December, and every month in between. Now, if you want a shorter month, just come and make four of those M's, three M's, and you'll get the abbreviation for that month, the three letter abbreviation. But for now, I'm gonna use the full length and since this is going to be changing based on some buttons, what we have to do here is, you know, it's not always going to be December or January or whatever. Well, this is where we're going to use the GV month global variable, that list global that we created. And GV month, we set that to the number five. But you may notice right now we're not seeing May. Well, what we have to do sometimes when we use global variables with some other stuff after it, and we kind of want to link those together, Right now, I'm thinking this should be 5M. Well, I have to put a plus in between here, so now it's gonna be thinking, okay, five plus an M, and that's essentially looking at it just like this. Bear this in mind, 5M, that shows May, but to use the five that's in our list global, we have to do GV month, and let's put a plus in between there. So now, whatever GV month is, one, two, three, four, five, all the way up to 12, and put that plus M, it's going to show it right there. Very good. Now I'm gonna put a hyphen in between here just to match my little title over here. And now let's do GV year. And we don't need anything special about that. We just put GV year. And we did have that set to 2020, or I did when I first showed you this component. So our month is good. Now we are ready to change the month and say when we hit December and we go to January, we want the year to bump up. Or if we're going backwards, if we're going from January back to December, I want this year to subtract one. So let's go into this overlap group where we have the rectangle and this text now, and I'm going to add a font icon. And this font icon, I'm gonna work on the left arrow first. So I'm just gonna search for arrow. And you can use any of these that you want. I'm just gonna use this arrow back. Yeah, that's different than what I have over here. But now, you know, this rectangle that we created, the thing that I said it was a container to kind of hold everything. Since this rectangle is so wide, if I take this font icon, the left arrow or arrow back or whatever it's called, and if I position this to the center left, it's gonna position it in the center, but on the left side of this big container, this big overlap group. And that's exactly where I want it. Now we want a couple of things to happen when we touch this. So I'm gonna to go to touch and we wanna affect the month, the year and the day whenever we touch this arrow. Essentially, all we're really gonna be thinking about is this arrow is going to change the month, but it could be changing the year as well, depending on whether we're going forward or backwards a year. In this case, we would be going backwards because we're pressing the left arrow but I also want to affect the day. So we're gonna do all three of these right now. Let's go to plus and let's just toggle that global switch month, that list global. And for this one here, since we're going to the left, let's think of this as going backwards a month. And since this is a list global, I can go to entry and do previous value. It's going to automatically go back a month, previous value. And to test that out, watch this right here. If I press the left arrow, it is going backwards through these months. So it's working exactly like it should. 
But you may have noticed when we went from January, and I'm getting ready to do it again, the year's not changing. Well, we have to fix that right now. So I'm gonna back out of here, I'm gonna add another touch and let's now affect the text global year. So with the year, here's what we wanna do. The only time I want this year to go backwards is if we press this button and the month becomes December. Now I have the code right over here. I'm just gonna copy and paste that into here because this is the one that's going to rewind it a year if we're on January and we press the left arrow, that's going to take us back to December, so we wanna go back a year. So copying that in over here, if GV month equals 12. So we're pressing this left arrow, and if we press this left arrow and the month becomes 12, we want to take whatever GV year is and we want to subtract one from it. And that's going to change that text global year from whatever year it was to one year less than that. Now, any other time that we press this left arrow button, I don't wanna change the year, so I want to leave it as GV year. Make sure you understand that. The only time we want to change this is when we press the left button. If we do that and GV month is 12, let's subtract one from the year. Otherwise, regardless of whatever month we have up here, when we press the left arrow button, we will leave GV year the same. I hope that makes sense. Now, one more piece in here, let's toggle the global switch day, and that is a text global as well. And for day, nothing fancy here, let's just set that day to be zero. Basically what this is going to do later on in this series, when we see our agenda down here and day is gonna be zero, there is no day zero in any month. So it's gonna be showing something like uh, no current things on your agenda or nothing scheduled or whatever you decide to put down there. But it's kind of a way to reset this agenda when we go forwards or backwards a month when we set day to zero. There will be no day zero on any month, so this is a nice way of just uh, resetting this agenda down here when we're toggling through our months. Now that we have that done, I'm going to back out to this font icon. I'm going to copy and paste. And now I'm gonna take that one that I just copied and pasted. I'm going to position this one at the center right. So now we're gonna have one this shot over here. And we can go to icon and let's do arrow, I think it's forward. Yeah, arrow forward right there. So now we've copied and pasted, which means our touches should all be the same, but we definitely wanna change the way some of these work. For example, month, instead of previous value, I want to advance to the next value. And I'm gonna show you that all of this works right here in a second, we're almost done. Gonna back out of here and now for year, so we're focusing on this button. That means that we may be potentially going from December to January of the next year. All right, so we're pressing the right arrow, we're going forward in time. So what we wanna do here is that, okay, for this year, it's code, if GV month is equal to one, we're now pressing the right arrow key. So we're advancing months. So if we go from December to January, the month is gonna become one. Well, when we do that, instead of us taking away a year, we want to add a year to whatever GV year was. But if this is not the case, if we're pressing the right arrow and we're just cycling through some other months, but we're not going from December to January, we don't wanna change year. We want to leave it as GV year. I hope that makes sense there. And now we should be good to go. So I'm showing November 2020. If I press the right arrow, now we see December. What should happen now? I'm getting ready to press this right arrow. It should bump up to January, and this should change to 2021. Let's find out. That's exactly what it did. And we should be able to keep on going through this all the way up, and if we go to the next year, it should bump up to 2022 when we go from December to January, and check it out. That's exactly what it did. Now we should be going backwards as well. Notice we did jump back down to 2021, and I'm gonna keep on cycling through the months backwards, and let's see if we can go back to 2020 when we go from January to December, it did do exactly what it's supposed to do. Awesome. So now just one last thing here, I'm gonna to go to that rectangle that has all of these things positioned, that overlap group and whatnot. I'm gonna to go to the paint for that and I'm going to set this to completely transparent. 
And one more thing we can do here is to just take this month and year with buttons. I'm going to slide that above the days of the week and that is inside of that everything stack group because literally this stack group here called everything with this stuff, we're gonna start putting more and more things inside of here as we complete this calendar from scratch tutorial series. And there you have it, part two, the month, the day, and the year. And that's it for this video. I hope it helped.